Welcome back to Reperception Podcast. Here we go, continuing on with our law series, Choses in Action, Part 5. Episode 5, Choses in Action. A Harvard Law Review essay, dated June 1920. In England, in the Middle Ages, the disorderly state of the country, the technicality of the common law procedure, the expense of legal proceedings, and the case with which jurors, sheriffs, and other ministers of justice could be corrupted or intimidated, made maintenance and kindred offenses so crying and evil that it was necessary to prohibit sternly anything which could be the smallest degree foster them. Therefore, the courts in the Middle Ages stretched the offense of maintenance to its utmost limits, and statutes repeatedly prohibited all practices which could favor it. Thus, it happened that all trafficking in rights of entry upon land were sternly forbidden and as late as 1540 a statute was passed which sharpened the edge of the medieval legislation on the other hand a permission to release a right of entry to the tenant in possession tends to stop litigation and therefore discourage maintenance such a release was therefore prohibited. But so serious and dangerous was the offense of maintenance all through the Middle Ages and until the Tudors had created a strong and efficient government, so great was the risk that any permission to assign rights of entry could, uh, would lead to acts of maintenance that it came to be thought that rights of entry upon land were not assignable because the risk of encouraging this offense in the case of rights of action indeed it was recognized that they were unassignable because through rights to recover property they were rights of action and therefore essentially personal for it was thought that as a right to bring a real action must be a right to sue a particular person in possession of the freehold. It was essentially a personal right, consisting only, as Coke said, in privity. Any chance that the law would recognize that a disguised owner's right to recover his ownership was merely incidental to that ownership, and that he would therefore be permitted to assign his right of ownership and with it his right of action to recover it was stopped by the fact that such a permission would obviously encourage maintenance. On the other hand, a release of a right of action to the tenant in possession was allowed for exactly the same reason as a release of a right of entry. Thus, it happened that these rights arising in the sphere of real actions exactly resembled the rights arising from the personal actions in that they could be released but could not be assigned. No doubt, both their capacity of being released and their incapability of being assigned were partly due to their personal character, but their incapability of assignment was due also, and chiefly in the case of many of these actions, to the dread of encouraging maintenance. The dread of encouraging maintenance bulked so large that the fact that their incapability of assignment was due to the personal character of many of these actions was overlooked, and thus it came to be thought all rights of action were assignable for this cause, a point of view which made for the permanence and rigidity of the rule. Indeed, as we shall now see, this dread of maintenance, which arose from the state of law and society in the Middle Ages, has had both a permanent and an unfortunate influence in the branch of law. Yeah.
Augenschmerz 